Hello everyone and welcome to this video now today I'm going to be taking a look at this album here it is the latest one by Elvis Costello called Hey Clockface so yes I'll just be doing the usual thing in this video giving a bit of background information about the album then showing you my vinyl copy of it here and then looking at each of the album songs in detail so this is Elvis Costello's 31st solo album done a yeah, ton of albums like um like now it was released like i said um on the 30th of october this year on cd and digital and the vinyl i believe was just released yesterday because that's when i got it i think it was like i said like i said like was delayed like a few weeks this album followed quite quickly off the back of the rather lush and quite measured album um look now and um, this al album though is quite a different affair it's uh, it was recorded in sort of two distinct uh, sets sections and um, like some of the songs were done in Helsinki back in February where Costello recorded um like all by himself like he plays like all like the instruments and voices and then most of the other material was done in Paris where he teamed up with uh, Steve Naive his uh, long-time keyboard player and a group of jazz musicians and um, so I can tell all three Helsinki recordings are used on the album album while the rest is from the Paris sessions now, now, notably, the sessions in Paris actually only lasted two days, but they did get um, a rather hefty nine songs out of them. So in the UK, this album charted at number 39, which is a bit poor, um, which is a bit of a poor performance, considering that Look Now got to number 14. But I do think that is because the vinyl, like I said, that was delayed, like so, so like any vinyl sa sales like weren't included, like with like the original like total like on like release week, like so that definitely that like, suppressed it there but critically though it has been getting a, a mostly a positive reception and um, it has to be said so i wish i show you my vinyl copy of it here this is just the standard uh, black vinyl version i think there was a colored one or picture disc or something available like on his website but like, I didn't bother with that, I just got the standard one there. So there's a cover. Firstly, hideous cover. Um, like, Look Now didn't have a great cover either. They're very sort of similar covers. They must be done by like, the same the, the same artist, I think. But yeah, not a fan of it too much. There's the back of it there, just with the track listing along the top. Nice gatefold, though. You've got little um, like images to go along with each of the songs there. Like little like um, further illustrations. And then um, the credits um, for who played on what track there as well. Um, it is a double album, this. So I will show, I will show both of the inner sleeves. So you get um, the lyrics on either side, a nice picture of him there. And then the vinyls, as I said, are just on standard black vinyl. And the other one looks like this. So again, um, just more lyrics, more illustrations and another picture often there also notably no download code with this either which is a bit um disappointing usually new albums do tend to come with some sort of digital version as well how how, how however this one and um, slightly disappointingly doesn't so i will should i go over each of the album songs in detail our score each check out a 10 and then use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album cold as stone hot as winter she turned to me. So it starts off with a song called Revolution Number no. 49. I'm not sure whether this is a maybe um, slight reference at the Beatles Revolution 9. Um, like, maybe not to be fair. Um, like, but it's basically just a brooding and rather dark opener, this one. Um, it's got these kind of Arabic sort of sounding instruments like on it as well. Plus it's a kind of spoken word song, so it does come off as a bit pretentious. Um, the main line on it though is, uh, love is the one thing we can save, which is a good message message i guess um and it is a um and like it does somewhat work as an album opener it's certainly a curious um song it's certainly one you think okay i'm not really sure what to expect now from the rest of the album and it's not too long either it's maybe i think i think it i think it's only about three minutes this one here and um, so it kind of like it's not a bad start to the album it's just um again a song i would never play it like i wouldn't i would never play it out with the album um and so yeah i would only give it a five out of ten personally no 
Cadets Track Up is easily the best song on here, easily the best track, it's No Flag, which just was the first single released way back, I think in March, and it is a brilliant song, it really rocks this, it sounds like old school, old school Costello this one, again he plays all the instruments on it, but it's just got such a catchy riff on it, um, again and quite direct lyrics on it about sort of trying to sort of fight like nationalism, he sings like, I've got no religion, I've got no philosophy, I've, I've got ahead of I've got a head full of ideas and words that don't seem to belong to me. Um, so yeah, it is a great song this, he's sounding fired up, he's sounding energised on this and yeah, like when it came out back in March, I absolutely loved it, I thought wow, wow this album is going to be great like if it's all, if, it, if it's all like off this sort of ilk. Um, so yeah, no flag. Uh, for me a 10 out of 10 and the only complaint with it though is the ending it kind of just sort of fades out a bit without any sort of real direction like it's not like a big finish like all like one note it kind of just sort of fades out like while he's still singing so i thought that maybe could have been a, a bit better but that aside it's still a great song so yeah for me no flag would get a 10 out of 10. They're not laughing at me now. Next one up is called They're Not Laughing At Me Now, which is another pretty good song on the album. It's much quieter, this one is, a more like acoustic based song, this. Um, again, his voice in this one does sound notice noticeably older, a bit more strained, but I suppose it does suit a song like this, like where like it's a slightly vulnerable song like, where he is sort of like singing about sort of like people like mocking him like and stuff. Um, like um, during the song though, more instruments are added um, and I just think yeah, it builds up really well this song and definitely for me like um, just there's a bit more bite to it than many of the other Paris recordings um, featured later on the album. Next up is called Newspaper Pain, which is a slower track, this, but um, again with an interesting production on it, the drums and backing like off the track are quite far are quite far back like in like the mix like with Costello's vocal like up front once again a weaker more sort of strained vocal though um but it does give it a kind of tense sort of feeling to it towards the end like off the track we get this sort of brass section which comes in which is quite effective it's a bit like unexpected again um so for me a yeah, newspaper fame would get a 7 out of 10 because overall it is a um, half decent song I don't know but I do the kind of dark mood of the album is continued with the next song called I Do, Zula's Song, um, which is, yeah, as I said, a darker, slower track, and um, more sort of brooding brass section again on this, and once again, a strained vocal from Costello, where he's really, I, I, I don't, I don't want to sound too cruel to him, like, because, like, because, like, just like last year, or was it, it was two years ago, like, he just can't, he, he, he had a bit of like a health scare so he's certainly like it's it's great that he's still making music great that he's still putting out albums are still able to do so but he is really struggling vocally nowadays especially like with a song like this where he's trying to hit like these high notes but he's just kind of like not managing it really um and yeah for me the song is just a bit of a sleepy one really um yeah like um, um yeah like i'm not a massive fan of it and can only really give it a four out of ten how we're all Cowards now. Next one up is called We Are All Cowards Now, which is another, um, again, a dark song, this, again, with sort of like um, political um, undertones on it. He sings on it, like, arms are empty, the pornography of plenty, count commands from one to ten, numbers since from ten to twenty. And um, this is another one which was recorded in Helsinki, again, all by himself so it doesn't have any drums on it this song like at all there's no real beat to it it's it's more just like so like a um it's a bit more ambient a bit more like of like a sonic scape like kind of thing but once again his vocal is very strained very weak um like but like um slightly um better than some of the other songs like on this album like just like in like in like the fact that it is that it is supposed to be like this slightly more sort of like angrier um angrier song he clap face I really want to know and then we kind of do a complete sort of 360 on that with the title track Hey Clockface slash How Can You Face Me Now which is a kind of Tim Pan Alley sort of jazz song and um, once again a rough vocal but 
it's got some really fun sort of like metaphorical lyrics about how like he's sort of like he's wanting time to stand still like but like the clock like has like other ideas like he's sort of saying he sort of things like hey clock face now i don't feel a thing you stole away the heart of me and then and then removed my spring it's, it's yeah it's just got a very sort of playful feel very sort of randy newman kind of feeling like on um like this song um, and like overall i do like it again does it stand up as one of his best songs ever not a chance it's, it doesn't hold a candle to classics like from like the 70s and 80s but it is a um, half decent um track on the album so yeah for me um we'll get a seven out of ten my common senses have deserted me next song up is called the whirlwind and um, which is another kind of ballad this one another sort of slower song and um, this one lyrically about someone who has kind of just moved like town he sings of it i came out to this town to seek a new career or just another kind of whirlwind than the one that brought me here. And um, the piano, as said, sort of takes centre stage on it. It's quite bare, minimalistic track. Um, it's not a bad song. It's just very average. It's very um, forgettable. Um, for, it's very forgettable, like, once again. Um, so, yeah, for me, um, could only really give it a 5 out of 10 on that one. Confidential. <laughs> Next one up is uh, called Hetty O'Hara Confidential, which is um, again one of the more interesting tracks. Again, it was one of the Helsinki recordings, um, like done like all by himself, and it really um, like is a good song. This I think. Um, I think the arrangement on it is very creative. He's just he's he's just not caring like on this song. He's not taking he's not taking himself too seriously. He's even attempted a bit of beatboxing like in like this one here, but all to great effect because it stands out and it's something different on the album. Lyrically, it's about a sort of like a journalist and um, like he sings like on it like her reputation cold like yellow smoke. She named the wrong man in the story that she broke. She had an unfortunate character trait. The the irresistible impulse to assassinate um so yeah um fun lyrics like um fun sort of like narrative lyrics like on it um and it is yeah um a song which does stand out on the album so yeah hetty and um, will get a nine out of ten from me but when i took you in but then we go back to the Paris uh, sessions and a couple of songs which just do nothing for me. They're boring, they're dull, and yeah, I've just not not got too much time for them. It's uh, the first of these is the Last Confessions of Vivian Whip, a another slow piano ballad. Um, just yeah, as I said, just doesn't do anything for me. I'm giving it a four out of ten because it's not it's not terrible. It's not it's not unlistenable, but it's just so boring, so dull, um, and yeah, it just doesn't really stand out for me at all. What's it that I lost that I don't really And then following that we get a song called What Is It That I Need That I Don't Already Have which again vocally a very weak song. He's just simply unable to reach these high notes, which he's trying to, like on this song, just sounds very strange, I got it. Um lyrically it is about a guy who's like not having too much luck in life. He sings I got it. What is what is it that I want that I can't already taste? A girl I once chased, a girl who ran away and I wanted to get caught, then bade farewell to my love like some merchandise she bought. So um, lyrics um, are uh, slightly stronger on this one. They stand out a bit more. But again, just in the musical arrangement, it's just very dull. It's really just Costello and the piano. And, it, and, and once again, the melody just doesn't stand up stand up too well like because you really need that like in like a song like which is just vocal like and piano you need a strong melody um and strong lyrics as well this one kind of has the lyrics but just is so lacking like in like melody that it's just not really worth like returning to so yeah for me you would get a four out of ten they say you have a perfect face for radio and a trumpet for listening. Now we're on to the final side, and it kicks off again with, again, for me, maybe the worst song on the album. It's called Radio Is Everything, and this is another spoken word track. And it's uh, sort of like in terms of like its concept and its message, it's very sort of different, like from like his sort of like hit Radio Radio, like back in like back in like his sort of like his seventies heyday, that like, way like he made fun like off like the format. Like, this one he's sort of like paying homage to it over a kind of ambient like instrumental backing. Again, for me, it's rather self-indulgent. It's just filler on the album. It goes on for, again, about four minutes, this one, I want to say. Yeah, four minutes, 25 seconds. Far too long. And uh, for me, uh, it is a three out of ten song. 
I can't say a name. I will spoon it so. Well, then, thankfully, in the last two tracks, we do get a bit of glimmer of light returning to the album. So, the first, uh, uh, so the penultimate book is called. I can't say her name, which is just another jazzy song, another one recorded in the Paris sessions, but a bit more upbeat than some of those ones. And um, like he sings, like on it, how can I go to sleep when I know all too well that I'm in things too deep? And um, it stands out for me because of its strong melody, it's sort of like a rolling melody, like on it. Uh, for me though, the reason why it's a six out of ten rather than a seven or even an eight is because it's let down by some scat singing, like he attempts like towards the end of the song, which he just really shouldn't have done and um, for me kind of ruins the vibe like off the track but overall mostly is a um all right song so yeah that one would get a six out of ten my line, my line, my line. and then the album closes with a song called byline which is a, a another sort of piano ballad it's a shortish track on the album but i rather like it lyrically it's about sort of like looking over letters sent to him like by like a former lover he sings like on it the profile on a postage stamp i i chased it by my reading light remember when i'd sit it, sit and wait then marked our parting from that day and um, in the middle of the song some um strong backing vocals come in they give it a different flavor and i think it is a good album close so it certainly ends the album like on like a like promising note there. From the day. Okay, so overall this album would score 61%. So that is um in relative terms for me quite a poor score for an album. Usually uh, usually albums if I really like them, I can get into like the 80%. Like if I think that they are still quite good, they're usually within the 70%. So 61 is quite poor. And I think it is just because um of a couple of factors. Firstly, it sort of zigzags across many styles, which sometimes I like on albums, but it's but on this it's just a very sort of yeah, it's quite schizophrenic. It really suffers from a lack of focus, but then also a lack of um, strong material for me and although it starts off quite strongly certainly no flag they're not laughing at me now newspaper may and um, newspaper pain they are all quite good songs i think it just then starts to lose its focus a bit and um, like again a lot of the material is just a bit dull and i think it's quite telling as well that like most of like the weaker tracks which are the Paris recordings like i said like were only recorded like over two days and um, like so like that maybe explains why some of them just don't really do much for me for me, though, the Helsinki tracks, um, which are No Flag, We're All Carrots Now, and Hetty O'Hara Confidential, are for me the better songs. They're just more interesting, um, like sonically, and also kind of like, yeah, like just like, and like, yeah, just in terms of like all of like, their production, like what like, he's trying to do, like on those songs. They just, they just for me seem a bit more vibrant. They just seem a bit more, uh, um, they just seem a bit more relevant. And yeah, for me, it is a shame that there are only the three of them. And like by like the halfway point, like on the album, I think I think Hetty O'Hara is the eighth song. So yeah, kind of just after halfway, there's no more like off them like on like the album, and um, it then just becomes a bit dull and um, dull and begins to drag this album. So yeah, that is my review of Elvis Costello's Hey Clockface. So yeah, probably not on album which i would recommend to start with with him on if you're not familiar certainly anything from the 70s or 80s like in like his catalog is much stronger and um like even like his like last album before this look now and um, i i think i think even though like a lot a lot of the songs are kind of similar kind of sort of like um singer songwriter like sort of like style songs like sort of like a lot of ballads i just think they're like a lot more stronger a lot a lot more memorable like on like his last album look now so yeah that's been my review of yeah hey Clockface. so hope you have enjoyed the video and i will see you all next time for the next one goodbye no time for the dark, please,